Okay. We spent a lot of time before Yontif um, talking about the Arboi Lamois and the Omic of it. And um, I made an executive decision to start uh, fresh with Paracute Olive, which is, of course, all based on that. Let's push record here for Dan. Um, let me give a, a, a one second uh, introduction here. The Paracute Aleph. The Nefesh Chaim says a Chiddush, which is um, said over a lot in the uh, wor in the world of yeshivas, in the world of Litvish yeshivas, <laughs> I think. And that is that um, the world, the world um, as we know it, would not exist if there would be a moment without Limud Hatira. That's a, a yeshiva chiddush of the nefesh Chaim. and uh, Ad Kedekach, he says someplace that um, the reason why there's different time zones all over the world is that there should never be a makom or a, a, a space in time where people are not learning Torah, and uh, that the world would return to tohu vavo if there was absolutely no Torah. So um, I just want to point out that. Nefesh Chaim says this, and if you grew up in yeshivas, you've always heard this, the Chashiva Satur, but the truth is, um, even even he admits that he doesn't have a riot to this. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not something which is a dover poshit uborer, but it's something that he feels is true based on his very, very deep and Kabbalistic understanding, that the world would not exist, in other words, to say it, to use his Lushan that we're going to explain today, I'll try to explain today is that uh, the world would go back to tohu vavohu if there wouldn't be limud atira. Um One of the things we need to understand is what is tohu vavohu. That's not talking about a situation of pre um, of pre asylum. That's talking about the beginning of asylum. So the toyu vavayu is already a very preliminary, but it's already part of the uh, of the of the bria itself. It's um, reminiscent of the language in the Gadatav, all uh, Tzitzvah, the Gemara, and Eichas Abbas, Noashishi. No. Yeah. What? So the hay is of Sivan, and, uh, and then the Gemara says if uh, or what hadn't been given, the world, world would return to Tovo. Okay. That's a little bit different than what we're saying here. It's reminiscent, but it's a little bit different. Here we're not saying, yeah. if the, but that's, that in itself may be a clue, but if the, if the Torah wouldn't have been given, there would be no world. So, which I understand a little bit better, because the whole purpose of the world was to keep the Torah. So, uh, of course, so the Torah would... Not just given, but then has to be learned every minute. It's an extension, but... Yeah. yeah that's so, I, I want to... Um, let's start learning here, but I want to start looking at things um, in a deeper way than the way we usually look, meaning look at them as, a, as an adult, not as what we've been hearing in Nigunim and uh, all the years. Velozois. Says the Nefesh Chaim, based on everything that we have learned, Iker chiyusam vi'oyram v'kiyumam shel ha'elamais kulam, not just our world, but atzilu, spria, yitzira, asiya, the whole business, the whole bria, physically and spiritually. That, Can you mute everybody, please? Do you hear noise? But it's my speaker view. I'm having other things come up, not you. Okay, you're all muted. Iker chiyusam va'oyram v'kiyumam shel ha'ilamais kulam malnachin. In order for the whole world to work correctly, hurak kishanachnu oiskim ba'karoy. It's only when we're learning Torah correctly. Kikut shabrichu, and here's the famous line which we all know from the Zayar. Kikut shabrichu v'oyraisa v'yisrael kulachad. 
It's all one thing. Shekol echad me Yisrael sherish nismosay ha'yoyna mudubak v'nechaz ba'ois achaz me'atayra v'hayu la'achadim mamish. Now, when I say I want to learn this, you know, once again, um, post us with a uh, maybe a deeper understanding, uh, you know, so we need to let go of whatever it is that we've been, you know, the niggin for a minute. Yisrael, well, we've got to let go of that for a moment and say, what in the world can it possibly mean that Yisrael, Oiraisa the Yisrael and Kuchabrichu or Kuchabrichu Oiraisa the Yisrael Kulaychad to say that we're supposed to learn Torah to say that that's the key of the world. Okay, we're supposed to learn Torah. Kachzi v'lanu abayra. To say that Hashem is one with His Torah, that's a much bigger chiddush. Meaning, and we learned this in the last uh, few prakim that um, that it's like one of the names of of Hakadosh Baruch Hu is Torah. But and then you have Yisrael. So kul What does that mean? That means we're God. Torah is God. God is Torah. God is Israel. Like, what does kul mean? What does it, what does it possibly mean? Ad kedai kach, shikol echad mi Yisrael, shayrish nishmasay hel yaina. That every one of us have a neshama. We have our goof. We have our neshama, and then we have the shayrish haneshama. So the shayrish haneshama medubak v'nechaz ba'ois achaz me'atayra. Everybody knows the tar- the Torah st- uh, um, Yisrael stands for Yesh Shishim Riboy Oisius La Torah, six hundred thousand letters in the Torah, which there are not. Can I get the six hundred thousand neshamas that came on Mitzrayim, which there were not? But uh, that's the number of Shirish neshamas that we use, which is Shishim Riboy. And that Shishim Riboy is an important thing because it makes a, a somehow a Rishus Harabim comes from the Shishim Riboy. But somehow or another, um, it, it, the, the remez here of Yeshishim Ribu Oisius Latoria, which is Yisrael, gives us a kesher, as he puts it, a kesher medubak v'nechaz, that we become, and even more, one with the Torah. But it's, what does it mean? As far as the 600,000, the Maral discusses what's special about the number, about the six and the, the tens and there are six, te- six digits and 600,000. It comes up to like an infinite type of uh, sen- sense of infinity of, of completeness. Okay. Still don't know what it means. Yisrael, kuchabrichu v'ayraisa v'yisrael kulei chadru. So let me um, propose the following and feel free to comment on it. I just want to uh, say, I just want, I want to bring out that this is not as much as we've been hearing it and singing it, it's not obvious logic that we and God are one. What, one? One? Hashem al chadush mo'yachad, e'noin milvadai. So, I mean, it, it's, it doesn't sound kosher to say that we're one. Hashem and the Torah are one. We and the Torah are one. It's all one thing. How's it, one with, how's it all one thing? To say that it's yachad, that would make more sense. It's united. But how could he say it's one thing? So let me let me um, just share with you the following. Dover Pasha, what do you say, Rabbi Yitzchok? You have a chat. There's a lesson of Chazal that we become um, at a certain level of Yichud Elyon, we become Shutafim the High Talk of Rabbi Yitzchok. So <clears throat> if you think of, um, I believe the. There's there's a um, expression of a tov who continued for two thousand years. Am I correct? Or am I wrong about that? Yeah, the world of six thousand years. The first two thousand are tov vavayu. So, <clears throat> so after tov vavayu, you have the kufa of Tyra. right? <clears throat> so lechayra the <clears throat> and Avram Avinu comes along and he gets char for the the uh, all the previous generations or the ten generations. So what's the, it seems to me that <clears throat> we could understand Torah Vavo as the antithesis of Torah. And, and the story, the Kufa Torah comes in where Avram Rabin was Masig at the Bare and his Masig, he's on the, he's on the same page with the Bare in terms of, he's not the Shutaf Lakarish Baruch of Bariya Sa'olam, even though it's way after Bariya Sa'olam, but basically the mission that the, the become, we become united in the mission 
and there's a oneness in that, then that's a Yichud Elyon, and the <clears throat> that's the antithesis. Torah is the antithesis of Torah Bavo. <clears throat> Okay, listen. I, 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 everything's true, but I just, I think we're going be deeper than what we actually understand. Now, let me, let me just maybe I speak for myself. Let, let me say this: that you know, in in um, in the in the in the world and in, in, in the world of psychology, sociology, um, humanity. You know, there's an expression of "you are what you love." You are what you want. You're Rutzel. In other words, if we look in the if we look at ourselves and say, like, who are we? What are we? What is our essence? So there's a lot of things. We have eyes. We have ears. But what's what is the existentially speaking? What is the essence of a person? So um, the Welt says, you are what you love. So meaning, like, if I love cheesecake, <laughs> so I am cheesecake. But um, if if I love something, so you become that thing. You become one with it. Uh, Derek Marshall is, um, you know, we, we, we often talk, every speech under the chuppah is always about how two neshamas are becoming one neshama. Uh, so somehow there's, it's not just united, it's two things becoming one thing, some magical thing. The Varkosem is happening um, under that chuppah by a chasana, which two becoming one? When, I, when I'm a Sadr Kedushin, even when I'm not, but especially when I'm a Sadr Kedushin, I'm overwhelmed with this idea that right in front of my eyes, two things are becoming one. <laughs> Somehow two things, two neshamas and shamayim are becoming one neshama. You know, and uh, I often think of like the famous Rebarch Bar, uh, you know, like the, that, that Kiddush of two becoming one happens every, every moment of the marriage, you know. Which I think Reb Chaim said to him, Mazel Tov. <laughs> like every, every, every moment is another. So what does it mean two things becoming one? I, the way I understand it in such a case is they're, they're not becoming one. They're not merging in. And it's, and it's actually, you could argue, very important from a marriage point of view that the two become stay two. You don't want to have codependence and you don't want to have... Um, you don't want to start now from the chuppah on outsourcing your emotions and to, to other people. I mean, a person is, has to be independent and has to be an individual. But we become more than united. We become one with a mutual goal. And we become united in our ratzon. That's what I believe the pshat is. We become united in our ratzon. In other words, at least at that moment, when we walk away from the chuppah, from the chuppah we have a mission that we're both going to take on the world, we're coming together, we're going to make a family, we're going to make a Kiddush Hashem, we're going to work together. Unfortunately, that can, that can grow further apart, or it could grow closer together, or it could have ups and downs. But the fact of the matter is, the whole idea of two becoming one is, is a, un, a unification of the Ratzon Ha'adam. You and I, if we're getting married, this is the way it's supposed to be, we're sharing the same Ratzon to go further. And Ratzon, you are what you love. Ratzon is the real Ratzon of a person, is the very, very deepest expression of who I am and what I am. So it's not about, like, you know, for that moment of the chuppah, to stick with my muscle, you forget about whether you like the flowers, you don't like the flowers, whether you like the dress, you don't like the dress, or whether you like the rabbi or you don't like the rabbi. The point is that two people are coming together as one, my Ratzon and your Ratzon, are now uniting. And in fact, we become us. I think that's the way it's meant to work from a, it's certainly like if somebody's in it for themselves, this is not a marriage. This is not what the Torah is talking about. We, even if you're in it for the other person, is not what we're talking about. It's talking about uniting and two people, two neshamas, as we always say, two neshamas becoming one neshama. So that's a, that I'm just saying it as a, as a mushal, as an example of where you see um, the rut zone takes two things and makes it into one thing. Yes, you see such a um, such a concept. See the so if that's if that's correct, which it is. Um, so we understand that Hakadosh Baruch Hu, I speak in human terms because uh, just lasaber uh, soizin and that's the best I can do. But Hakadosh Baruch Hu decides to create a world. 
we don't know why Hashem decided to create a world. This is the, uh, the Yisoyed of all Kabbalah is, why did Hashem create the world? The answer of all, that's the Arizal and the Zayar and the, and the Ramchal and the Maramipan. They all start off with this question, why did Hashem create the world? And they all give after 10 pages the same answer. We don't know why Hashem decided to create the world. But what, what we can understand is what, that it was obviously Hashem's Ratzon to create the world. So what, did it, what, was, what was the idea? What was the big idea here? The big idea was, I'm going to create a world. I'm going to be Megala my Ratzon. Where, how am I being Megala my Ratzon? In the Torah. And who's going to make that my Ratzon into their Ratzon? People had a choice, Kleiser. So it comes out that Kuchibrichu Vairaisa, that a Baruch Hu and his Taira, it's Chadhu. In the sense that just like with a person, I am what I want, except with a person, you have to strip down all the things that I, my, got, my goof wants and I don't really want, or society tells me I want and get down to what I really want. And in, in HaKadosh Baruch Hu's case, there isn't all those factors, seemingly. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Ratzon is the Tigris. So Kud Shabrich Havarai Sechadu. Now comes Kla Yisrael. He, they, we, we were created to be the recipients of that Tigris. So now that becomes our Ratzon, just like you want to marry your wife. It becomes our Ratzon to do the Tigris. So now we become one with the Torah. So you understand what's happening here? This is a very, very special thing. You have two sides of a string. Kuchabrichu, his Ratzon is the Torah. Yisrael, our Ratzon is the Torah. So now it comes out in Cheshman. Kuchabrichu, Vairaisa, the Yisrael, Chadhu. Because we all have the same Ratzon. We're all part of the big idea. The big idea called the world. Instead of um, <clears throat> Ratzon, um, could we talk about, could it be that we share one purpose? The person, when a person realizes his purpose, he's on board, then he's a shutaf with the Kaddish Baruch Hu I'm sure it's true, but um, Reusa de la'ela, first of all, means Ratzon. Um, and two people could share one person. People, I'm not sure. You know, I just want to, I want to um, take a tangent to explain this for a moment. And it's, um, I might have told you the story before, but it was very pivotal in my life. It, um, but uh, years ago, I'm talking about 40 years ago. So years ago, so um, a woman called me from New York. I was in Buffalo, New York. I was a rabbi in Buffalo, New York. Um, intermarriage then, and probably still is, like, it was the way of the world. Rive, at least in Buffalo. I mean, they have these percentages, uh, you know, about how many people marry out. Those percentages weren't no gay in Buffalo. In Buffalo, it was 99%, I would say. It was just a ness if a Jew married a Jew. That came out, didn't happen. Um, in New York, probably less, so that changed the average. In any case, um, this woman, uh, forgive me if you've heard me tell the story before, but I think it's an important story. But this woman from New York called me, and she said her son is in medical school in Buffalo, in the University of Buffalo, and um, she says, I have a problem. You know, we're, we, you know, we're very Jewish, and I remember she put her husband on the phone to uh, speak with him in, in Yiddish. You should understand, like, because <laughs> of Yiddish. What way to understand how Jewish they are? Okay, so you know, uh, so we're we're talking in Yiddish, and um, he says we have the son of the wonderful boy, beautiful boy, talented, smart, the smartest the God ever created, and and um, he's in the University of Buffalo, and he's going to become a doctor. My son, the doctor, and best grades and everything else, and now he's um, he's getting he's he's getting engaged to a Chinese girl. So, um, so, Rabbi, you have to do something about it. I said, what do you, you know, so I said, well, I don't know the guy. So he says, you have to do something about it. So he, he, she tells me, um, 
you know, she charged me with this and to do so. I said, listen, okay, I'll call the guy. I don't know if I could do anything about it. I'll call the guy, but I'm going to have to tell him that you told me to call. I mean, because how would I call a random guy and say, what's with the Chinese girl? You know, is that something I could do? So, um, so she says, no, 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 no. You know, she mustn't know that it came from me. You know, so I said, well, then I can't call him. Anyway, she called the second time and a third time and a fourth time. And every time I had this condition, maybe I was wrong, maybe I was right, but that's what I said. And I'm just a nice I said, I'm not going to call this. You tell me that I could, I said, I'm not going to call a guy and stop. So finally she said, okay, um, tell him, tell him that I called, tell him I'm concerned about him. So I called him right away. Five minutes later, I called him and um, I said to him, uh, your mother, I said, this is Rabbi Haber. He said, oh, your mother asked, asked me to call you. <laughs> he said, your mother asked me to So I said, yeah, your mother's very concerned about you, and she's worried about you, and she says that you're not eating well, and you're not sleeping well. That's what she said. And you're torn. Um, she says, I am very torn. I'm very, very torn. So I said, well, why don't you come over and talk about it? So, um, so he came over to my house. I remember this like yesterday. He came over to my house. Nice guy. I mean, I don't know if he was God's gift to the world, but he was, <laughs> he was a nice enough guy. Um, he, he comes to the house and he starts to tell me the story that uh, that his mother is adamant she's going to go crazy, she's going to disown him if he marries this girl and this girl says she's going to leave him and what kind of craziness is this and you're not religious, you, we must get married tomorrow and he's going between his mother and his, his, his fiancé and his mother and his fiancé back and forth and he's going crazy. So I said to him, just as a, in a, a stroke of siyata de shmaya, I said to him, I said to him, um, Bert, I think his name was Bert. I said to him, I said, let me let's get the story clear here. You know, you're telling me what your mother wants and you're telling me what your girlfriend wants, but you haven't mentioned once what you want to do. Or what do you want to do? It was, it was an honest question. I mean, it wasn't like a, a Kiruv 101 uh, lesson I took. I said, what do you want to do? And he gets this blank look on his face, totally dumbfounded. Like, you know, nobody's asked me what I want to do. So I said, well, I don't know if you should do what you want to do, but at least it would be good to know what you want to do. It would be like, let's, that's a good point of departure. He says, I don't know. So I said, look, you know, you look like you're pretty desperate. Let me go out and get you a glass of uh, Tropicana orange juice. I go to my kitchen and you'll think about it for a few minutes and we'll talk about it. I, I just stood up from my chair walking towards the door that room I used for a study. And uh, he says to me, look, Rabbi, obviously, if all things being equal, what I want to do is I want to marry a Jew. He says, you know, and he started to tell me marrying a Jew and having Jewish children and a bar mitzvah and the music. He was like, like the clarinets at the Jewish wedding and the whole, of course I want to marry a Jew, but things are not so simple in this world. So I said, okay, okay. I just wanted to know what you want to do. So I said, my, my advice to you is, like, stop listening to all the voices around you and just do what you want to do. And the, he was upset. He was crying. He was, uh, anyways, our meeting ended. And he called me the next morning and he said that, I just want to tell you, Rabbi, that I broke up with my girlfriend and I'm doing what I want to do. And I'm not speaking to my mother. <laughs> this is too... Uh, so, so, okay, and he came, actually came for Shabbos, and he started getting a little bit interested. So um, about a week later, you know, his mother, who used to burden me so much with phone calls and drive me crazy, so um, she calls, and I'm waiting for the big Yasher Koyach, you know, broke up the intermarriage, and uh, she calls, and she says, Rabbi, he says, I, I wanted to break up the marriage, but I don't mean that my son should become orthodox. <laughs> she tells I don't want him to become orthodox. You know? So... So I, I just like hung up on her. <laughs> the, uh, you know, everybody wants what they want. But my, my point in this long-winded story, besides for giving you a moment of entertainment at the beginning of the week, is that really two things. Number, number one is that it's, you know, you know I, I spent many years in Kirov, And the ultimate of Kirov is not the codes and not anything that you're going to, any argument that you're going to put in front of the person. Oh, fine. That's all fine. But what it really comes down to is finding the place of the neshama of a Jew and helping the person express themselves as to what deep, deep inside they really want to do. And it's ad that sometimes it's very, very difficult to find. 
And there are the things that bring it out. Maybe sometimes music brings it out. Maybe sometimes Cholun brings it out. I don't know. Good friends, good people, Kiddush Hashem, all kinds of things. But at the end, it's, it's really about Ratzon. It's really about Ratzon. Because when you talk about the Ratzon, it's to get to the really, not just the deepest part of the person, but the essence of the person. And to strip down all the different things that we're told to want, that we think we want, that we've been conditioned to want. No, we're talking about what are we really and what do we want. By the way, we're all from, but not such a bad idea to um, just stop and think every once in a while as to like, what do we do? What do we really want? What is our neshama telling us? And then try to go for it because the rut zone is, 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 is the most important thing that we have. In, on, from a God point of view, Shem Yuchud Kuchabrichu Uruuse. We're talking about the Ratzon of Hashem. The, the, the Ratzon of Hashem is Knesset Yisrael, and the Ratzon of Hashem is as the Shechina. And as close as we can understand Ratzon Hashem, the closest we can understand is Hashem Himself. In other words, we could say, we could say Look, who understands God, to be honest? Nobody understands. But what we can understand is what, he, what his Ratzon is. That's the Torah. The Torah is a giloi from the world of Bria through the world of Yitzira into the world of Asiya that came to a Navua with Moshe Rabbeinu. This is my Ratzon. There's a giloi Ratzon Isbarach in the Torah. And, and I don't know if it's just about the mitzvahs, but it's like the essence of how the world works. Of course, it's about the mitzvahs. I'm not, I'm not saying it's not about the mitzvahs, but it, there, there is somehow Ramuz in the Torah, if you really study it correctly, as a mature person, there's the essence of a Kaddish Baruch Hu there. Or, or more important, what was the big idea? That's the headline here. What's the big idea of the world? Of, of So the, the only gilui we have is through the Torah, which is the Ratzon of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And the only thing that we can do is to be misached. He misached. Uh, yeah, 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 right? We sing this on Shabbos sometimes. You know, it's it's all about creating an achdus through Torah, through Shabbos, through that our Ratzon should be the same as his rats. And that's what the pshat, the whole Pirkei Avos, is Asei Ritzai Noi Kirtzaincha. Asei Ritzai Noi Kirtzaincha, Asei Ritzaincha Kirtzai Noi. There was making a hashva'a between the, the two Ritzai Nois. And that is, I believe, the the um, important understanding, if you will, of Yisrael, the Kuchabrichu, the Araisa, Chadhu, where there's an Ichud HaRatzain, between all three. So there's Akadosh Baruch Hu and his Ratzin, Oiraisa. Yisrael and their Ratzin, Oiraisa. What do you really want? And uh, I heard once from, the, from uh, Rabbi Rucham, the Mashkiach Amir, that, uh, that when, it, when it comes down to, you know, the Gemara has all these questions that they're going to ask us at the pearly gates. Did you do business honestly? Did you learn Torah? You know, all the different Nasata and Nasata Amuna. But he said that the common denominator between the whole thing is, what is your Ratzin really? And if your Ratzin is not there, it's unlikely that it's going to um, last. You, see, you could train a kid from today till tomorrow, you know, to do this chumr and that mitzvah and, and, and get up and go to sleep and take this haircut and that haircut, etc. But it's, if it's not the deep Ratzin, it's not going to last. If it is the deep Ratzin, you can go through anything. Kid could go through anything. So, the, you know, the question is, you know, the whole chinuch here is to develop within a person the rutzen, the whole cure of Bali Tshuva is to find that rutzen. It's all about the rutzen. I'm very, very, this is not from today, I'm very, very um, stuck on this idea of the rutzen ha the lev toiv, as we talked about last week, Rebbe Lazar ben Arach, the lev toiv. So, Rabbi Heber, in a, in a previous year, you mentioned about the Sech's Yodech Masbir Lachol Chai Ratzon. Is that the same Ratzon that you're talking about? It's the same Ratzon. Poisech has Yodech Umasbiya Lachol Chai Ratzon. Give us, what does it mean? How do you translate it, Yoni? 
So that, I mean, that's, uh, that's all I could remember. I would assume it's like Hashem's Rotson, but I, I mean, so now in view of what we said now, that it would give me the insight to be able right. to say... For, forget about how you... Th- right, so how would you translate it? <laughs> um, uh, that's man talking to Hashem. Right? Yeah, yeah. And satisfy us. We're saying, Hashem, open up your hands. Uh, pay Aleph Yud, by the way, is the Rosh Hashanah, which is 91, which is the, the, the Sirof of Adnai and Yudke Vodke. And and let everybody ha- get get in touch with their Ratzon. Give us a Ratzon. Always. is enough to be said. What is Ratzon doing in there? That was the Shiva's question. So he says, the Rebbe Shalom gives you the Ratzon to want to need to eat or to whatever it may be, because sometimes we don't even have that. The Chesed of the Rebbe Shalom is so incredible that he gives you the Ratzon that you should have the need because sometimes you don't want, you can't eat you, whatever it is. The chetz of the Shalom is that he gives you also the ratzon. So that's a very specific... Right. Um, Beautiful as usual. I don't think that I'm, I'm, um, I'm disagreeing with it at all. I think it's saying the same thing, but there's also a ratzon ruchani. It's not just to eat and to sleep and to, like, appetite, but there's a deep ratzon within us that we need to get in touch with. He would be. He would agree. Yes, <laughs> and, and Hashem gives us the ratzon and gives us posech as yodecha. And every moment, though, it's very so interesting. Posech, every Hashem has to op, open up his hands to to to. But that's the atzim of the bria. And the trick is when you if the wrong commitment, it's even better because now we have the two worlds and we have the ruchnis world and the gashmis world that have to combine in the ratzon. No, like what, I mean, what the rabbi was saying. In a sense, it was the the ruchnius. What what um, Yaakov is saying is the is the the, the gashmius. And it's all the, the same thing. Right. That's why I'm saying it's a shituf of the two of the two shemos. Yes. Uh, it's yodecha, the gashmius, the ruchnius, the yam and the small. You know the the mukubalim know the mukubalim know that they they when they say posech yodecha they put their hands up. You know, you see, always posech yadecha. What does it have to do with our hands, his hands? What's the, everyone, we should we should do that also. Posech yadecha, umas biel chol chay ratzon, because it's all one ratzon, chad hu. When, like, when, when we learned about this uh, a few months ago, <clears throat> I think there was an aspect of Hashem's ratzon and our ratzon uniting, of being beyond the... Is, uh, That's what I'm saying. Do I remember, do I remember correctly? Yeah. That, yeah, that but, was his ratzon. But it's exactly, yeah, his yeah, ratzon. His because and our ratzon no, are synced up. No, I was saying, at this point, there's no difference. His ratzon, our ratzon, because chadhu. It's a, you know, in other words, there should not be a difference between what I want and what my wife wants, in that sense, in the big goal, and the big ratzon. There might be difference in what we want to eat for supper. But there, 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 there shouldn't be a difference in the etzem ratzon, because that's what's, that's what's making us into one. And Kozman, we have the same Ratzin, we're one. V'lakach Amru B'breshis Rabba Perak Aleph. And so we, we can understand, though, that um, if the Hashem's, his Ratzin, I just want to, let's, let's get our brains back to where we're, we're going. If Hashem and his Ratzin are Chad, and therefore us in the Torah is Chad. So if that whole package is working, then you have a world. But if the whole thing doesn't work, this is Reb Chaim Volozhin's amazing uh, mathematics, physics, that if, 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 if my Ratzin and his Ratzin are not Matim, so then we're back to Tohu Vavohu. What's Tohu Vavohu? Tohu Vavohu is like the, 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 the raw material of the Bria, not the Bria itself, yeah? In other words, there's the raw material of Tohu Vavohu, the... the um, Noth- nothingness and void. Nothing is actually happening here except for a potential. 
the, the Gra, I want to get to it, I don't know about today, but I want to get to the, the, how the Gra explains Toyo Vavoyu and how compatible it is to what we're saying. But it doesn't say that the world would just go poof. It would go back to Toyo Vavoyu. And Yitzhak, as you said, the first 2,000 years of the world was Toyo Vavoyu until Avramovino in the year 1948, and when he was 52 years old, until he said, Hashem Melech, there was no metzias of the of on a global level level of the ruts our ruts and his ruts and so the years of Tov Avo ended at that moment when Avram Avinu said my ruts and is your ruts and what can I do and by the way when a person um, like Avram Avinu who went into the Kivshon Aish or like Rabbi Akiva who who happily was Meisher Nefesh for Yiddishkeit and I'm not uh, not saying we should be look to look to do this type of thing but it's it helps me understand that if you you can come to a madrega where there's no difference you don't have to go to Rabbi Akiva what's what's taking a a, 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 a simple 18 year old kid and putting him in the army where he's going to take a bullet for the Jewish people Michigan <laughs> run away what are you doing and we don't run away particularly Jews don't run away why? Because deep inside, our rutzon is to protect the Jewish people and to do the rutzon Hashem. Barli kechama. And, and it, it, it's, it's understandable how Jews, not even religious Jews necessarily, but, but, but Jews, the, if the, you get into a moment of, of rutzon halyon. And rutzon halyon is, you know, what the right thing is. The Arizal says that the way you know you got to Ratzon Elyon is if there's Dima. The way you know you got in touch, let me repeat that. The way you know you got in touch with your real Ratzon is that it makes you cry. It's a half a good thing. Not, not, uh, you see, you see, um, on, on video, I was watching on Yom Yer Shalayim, you, you, you see, Chiloni soldiers, Chiloni soldiers crying when they when they got when they took the coat cell. You know, Harabait like they they where what what are you crying about? And and they didn't and not necessarily they weren't from and they didn't become from. That's not the point. The point is that there was a moment of of there was a moment of Gilu Yelian, I believe. I'm sorry. What did you want to say, Ephraim? I cut you off. I just wanted a little clarification. Uh, I understand the point about a unity of Ratzon. As someone else put it, the unity of purpose. I understand that. I also understand the marshal you gave of the Chatan Mekala under the Chupat also arriving at a, a unity of, of a sense, except it's different. Uh, under the Chupat, there's a unity that is also expressed in a sense of parity between the two, the Chatan and the Kala. In our relationship with the Kodesh Baruch Hu, there's no parity. We are, in a sense, partners in the Bria, but we're not equal partners. He doesn't serve us, we serve him. I, I think we need a little clarity on that, because it's not clear exactly when we speak of unity of, of Ratzon, his Ratzon and our Ratzon can't be the same. They have to be on different levels. Well, well, I'm not sure I'm following your logic. Why Why does equality have to be part of it? In other words, uh, you know, I mean, Lamashul, if I would make a corporation and I have uh, 45,000 um, employees, like like Facebook, Lahabdil, so it's like a whole world. So there's the rutzen of the Balabais, and presumably um, everybody does that rutzen, a piece of it. Otherwise, they're out of here. They're fired. In other words, the the rutzen is not as ma'achid now in a chasan and kala. Maybe it's equal, maybe it's not equal. I have no idea, but uh, let's say it's equal. With chasan Hashem, it's probably not equal. But but the point is not equality here or parity, as you call it. The point is that that we're we're all part of. Hear hear my sentence here. We're all part of one idea. There is nothing else but that idea. There's only one idea here. There's only one thing that we're doing. Everything else, okay, nice. And we'll go on a picnic. But but the, the, at the end, there was one idea, a reason we were created, a reason why we live, a reason why Hashem created, a reason why there's a Torah. It's all one big idea. You know, one big Lahabdil Facebook um, that, that 
you know, gigantic corporation called the world. Everybody has to be relevant in it, but more important than everybody has to be relevant. Everybody, by the way, not just Jews. Kol boy Olam, the Rambam says. Everybody has to be relevant. But Yisrael that, had, that, that accepted the Torah, so Yisrael, Vairais, Vakut Shabrichu, it has nothing to do with equality. I, I don't know if the Chassan and Kala has anything to do with equality. It means, you know, when, when a Chassan and Kala, if, if, if we're successful in a chuppah, they walk away from that chuppah with, uh, you know, they, they take each other's hands and they walk away, which is the Minnig Yisrael, and they walk away with a sense of purpose and, and a, a, a stride, you know, a jump in their walk, and they're going and we're taking over the world. Now, it could be by the next day, Shabbat Baruch is exhausted, but, but it, it, that's, the, that's what's going on at, at, the, at the Achtus of Ratzah. You, 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 you grab the essence of what I'm trying to, um, to suggest. Uh, when I say parity, I don't necessarily mean equality, but on the same level. Right. So it is the same level. Why isn't it the same level with Hashem? It's all part of one big idea. Is it good for it, us? It's good for us. It's good for him. It could be helpful to think about his spotless in the in the Nesiva Shalom talking about Yichud Elyon Matan Torah. <clears throat> he stresses this whole thing of total his spotless that you cease to uh, to be an independent being. I'm no longer <clears throat> like you the idea of you know you join the army. You're, you're not behind the plow. <clears throat> your 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 existence, your identity. <clears throat> uh, is uh, no longer relevant. It's you're part of Hashem. You're part of Hashem's mission. So that <clears throat> that allows you. To, otherwise, there couldn't be a oneness because there's only Hashem. So how could there be me and Hashem? A sh- a sh- you, which, you know, which, you, know uh, you know what comes to mind. That's, the, and that's part of the problem of, of parity. Is like this. Parity means there's me and there's somebody else. But if you have total his spotless, there's only Hashem, and I'm just part of that. Fused together. You're fused together. Yeah. I'm I'm uh, I'm thinking as you're speaking, which is very helpful. The the um, how does unity between Jews fit into this? Yisrael v'kuchabricha v'araisa chadhu. So like you know, you know we always think of unity as like um, you know you want unity like uh, bomb the Knesset or something. You know like like all the bachlekes and there should be unity. So that's just because uh, you know there's going to be. A different opinion. There's going to be a lot of different. Uh, I mean, if it's checker, it's checker. But there's going to be a lot of different opinions about how to skin, how to skin a fish over here. That's not the. That's not the question. But if the, the I think the 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 achdus in any body. Let's say uh, let let's talk about the Israeli government. I think the achdus, which is important, otherwise it shouldn't be there. It shouldn't be there. Is the actus of the same rot zone to make the, the 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 state of Israel and the population of Israel work, be healthy, be vibrant, be viable? That has to be a, a you know. So when somebody gets up and and you know says something which is completely uh, connected that, so that's treason. <laughs> but but the there should be an actus. You know, whatever they are, you know, we could argue with their religious beliefs or their political beliefs, but whatever they are, there has to be an achtus in the ratzo. So I think when we're talking about, like, um, unity, what we're really talking about is achtus ha correct? Am I right? That's what we're talking about, achtus ha I can have, that's why it's so hard for us to have pe- unity with people that are different than us, because do we really have the same ratzo? But I guess the answer is, if you, if you dig deep enough, you do. You do have the same rutzon, and and uh, as, as much as you could touch on the same rutzon, so then that's how much that's how much you could be ma'achid. I just tell you a last thing, you know, because I keep talking about marriage. And by the way, I'm not I'm I'm a, I'm a philosopher. I'm not as good as this at this it's as, 10 o'clock. as I sound. But um, you know, I I think you know I do talk to a lot of people, and one of the things I find is. You know, even even when you talk about like Achtos or Shalom Bayis and things like that, um, you know, it doesn't have to necessarily be, you know, that we have Echad in every single thing. We both want to go to the same, on vacation at the same time. We both want to go to sleep at the same time. Both want to eat the same thing. We both, um, and I'm, I'm saying superficial examples, but there's all kinds of examples. That That's not... 
that's not normal and that's not chayev and that becomes a sort of a codependence. What, what, what is important is maybe not like this, but maybe like this. You know, maybe, maybe that everybody has to have their little independence there, but there has to be an achtos harotzeh. Ultimately, we want the same thing. And if ultimately we want the same thing, like if our ruts are the same thing, we have just different ways of going about it. So beside her, that could be a, a healthy thing. And I, I think it's, um, you know, particularly young couples, but even older ones, I get very disappointed that, you know, I just can't deal with this. I want to eat milk, I want to eat flesh, I want to this, I want to go that. You know, I want this furniture, I want that furniture. It's, 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 um, those are, those are not, those things are not nogeya, the etzem ratzem, or they shouldn't be unless we create ourselves and put ourselves into our coffee tables. But the, 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 the etzem ratzen is what do we want to accomplish as a couple? What is our mission in the world with the family that we're going to create or not the family with the community we're creating or whatever it is that we're doing? And everybody should have a mission statement. There's no question in my mind. But that's where the ratzen comes in. The jobs, the tastes, the this, the that. After all, I mean, one's a zacher, one's a nekeva. <laughs> not supposed to be the same. They're saying you wouldn't want to marry them. So there, there's a lot covering up that that Edson and uh, I mean, I, I hate to be the one to bring up the Rambam, who says that you can you can beat a guy into giving a get, and that's what he really wanted. The beating is Megala what he really wanted. So Mashma, there's a lot covering up the essential ruts, and I've heard from other uh, very wise and learned people that sometimes the ruts is to um, take a nap. So, but that's but that's not referring to the etzem ratzon. What the rav is referring to is that a Jewish person, especially, but even a goy, has an etzem rush ratzon to serve the Lord. But there's a lot covering that up. Now, that... Again, I'm I'm not even talking about the nevshachaim. What the nevshachaim is saying is that that we're, it's all one in the sense that the rav is describing that 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 God laid out the mission statement, and our ratzon is to is to be nisbatel to it, which doesn't mean that the etzem the etzem person disappears. It's just that I'm mikdash all that I am to that essential mission. So that's that's a that I the nefshachayim is that that though I love the way the rav put it that the the ratzon is is in the same is is mechuvan in the same direction. The, the, the tricky part, and I and I don't think it's Nagaya to this year, but I would love to hear the Rav speak about it, is how are we Megala, the Etzim Ratzon in ourselves, and like the Rav said, in, in to be Makar of others, and I'm not even talking about Balei Chuba, random example, let's say one of our children, that um, how how do we be Megala, the Etzim Ratzon in ourselves, and maybe even in the most immediate people around us without the Rambam's beating? Okay, so, uh, you know, well summarized, but, and I'm not, you know, yes, the one requires a how-to course and how to get to the Ratzon, but suffice it to say, just in summary for today, what the Nefesh Achaim is telling us is that we need to be mechalik between the Etzim Ratzon of Adam and the Ritzonis that society has taught us to want or our Taivas have taught us to want. And that Etzim Ratzon is not only where we can be ma'achid with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but it's also where we can be ma'achid with each other. And how do you get to the Etzim Ratzon? How do you do that? I agree with you, it's further afield and there's there's much to talk about in the how-to, but but at least to know the Yisoyed, that you know you are what you want, you are what you love, and if you want to change, Ein Dover Oimate, here's a good uh, last uh, sentence, Ein Dover Oimate Mipnei HaRatzon. The Gemara says, and and the 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 Gros says interestingly in that Ben he says, "Hakol harishin." Boy, have I seen this so many thousands of times. You know, you could talk a person into a million things, but if that's not really their rut zone, they'll do it. But if they'll do they'll they'll do it. They think they're doing it with a fervor. It'll last a day, a week, a year, two years. Poof, it's gone. If you don't touch the the real ruts of the person. If that, which the Gra calls the Ratzon Harishin, the essence, what he means Rishin, it's not necessarily the first thing. You know, if if I want to do a certain thing, no matter how much somebody talks me out of it, I might listen to them, but I'm not. It's not going to become me. I'm not going to be Matzliach with it. So, I mean, that's pretty radical, but I believe that it's uh, a lot of truth to it, and it comes to Chinuch, comes to Kiruv, comes to uh, marriage. Okay, I I will let you go and enjoy your week. Just explain in the lesson of the. 
of, of the Nefesh Chayim. He says, "V'nechzas ba'ois achas me'atora v'hayu lachod emamish." What does this mean? Your nechzas ba'ois achas. I think that it's every ois in the Torah has a different purpose. So you, the purpose of the Vav is not the same purpose of the Yud. When their Meshaber becomes the Torah, it's the same thing with every person. Uh, the the, the Ratzon HaKadosh Baruch Hu, in order to be, to be um, articulated, has to be articulated in 600,000 letters. And each one has a different purpose. And, the, the, and this is the lesson here. The same thing with Kla Yisrael. We, we, we find your ois, doesn't mean necessarily you're a gimel or you're a dalit uh, or a mem sofit, but, but, but what, it, what it means is that everybody has a different, this is the godless of this, everybody has a different tachlis and brings something else to the table, but it adds it all becomes one safer turn. And if one letter is missing, the whole safer turn is possible. And I, th I think that's, that's what we're talking about. Okay, bracha everybody have a good day.